Hi to all, my name is Zai, played Quake for over 17 years, passing on some experience with gaming mice. Now, after a thousand requests and an Amazon vote, here is the Final Mouse 2016 Classic Ergo. This reminds me of the Razer Imperator, a mouse I returned after a day. That's personal preference, and I'll explain why later. I've heard there are mixed reviews out there, but I'll quickly confirm one thing. The LED is very bright, and it stays on after the PC is off. A way of turning that off would be great. Now let's get to build quality, here's a button check. The left and right buttons are on run switches, and they feel great, they seem to have very little latency or resistance. I managed a good result in the human click test, but remember, that's just a general idea, not an exact measurement. If you like light mouse buttons, these should suit you. I'm assuming they're going to be good in MOBA games, but again, I can't jitter click, so you'll have to test that for me. And of course, no problems in first person shooters or other games, they're just really nice buttons. The side buttons are angled and sharp, they don't bother me, but I know some people don't like that style of button. The travel is short, and the tactile feedback is pretty tight, with mouse 4 seeming a bit loose compared to mouse 5. The DPI button is fairly standard, the mouse wheel is smooth and doesn't seem to rattle, although that could just be my copy. There is a little tactile feedback, but not to the point CS players will love it. It might be okay though. Personally, this is exactly what I want from a scroll wheel. It's just really smooth and quiet, which is great for browsing, but not so much in games. But I don't use it in games. Mouse 3 is slightly harder to press in compared to the others. It seems fine though. And the mouse seems fairly well built, with very little noise when tapping it. It has a smooth rubber coat on top, which feels really good. And it doesn't seem to slip during game. Where I did find it slip was at the thumb. Only a tiny bit, but enough to make me aware of it while playing. That's a smooth perforated plastic, while the other side has a bit of a glossy finish. You can already see it does pick up the dirt. Generally a mouse this size would weigh about 95 grams, but it's actually 88 grams even with a little bit of cable. The cable is braided but it's quite loose and flexible. I've just blue tacked it as usual. It holds its shape in some sections, although I'm not sure why. And because of that, I couldn't get an exact measurement, but it seems like the standard size is probably about 1.8 meters. On the base, you have four mouse feet, and they seem to glide really well. In fact, on this Cougar Speed 2 pad, there's almost no resistance. Here's a quick sound test for you. Now on the QCK Plus. So on both pads, there was barely any noise. Here's a proper look at the shape. Obviously you've got a thumb groove over here. And on the other side, there's another little groove up the end here. Hope you can see that. And this edge actually just does not fit my hand. No matter where I place the finger, it always seems uncomfortable. This is what I mean when I discuss a safe shape. The more angles and curves you add to a mouse, the less safe it becomes. Because when you force fingers to go into a certain place, it prevents people with different size hands from being comfortable. So with a hand that's roughly 18.5 centimeters from base to tip and middle finger, this is not a comfortable mouse. In fact, even the thumb groove seems a bit deep. It is easy to pick up and put down, but during game, I did not find this a comfortable shape. During Windows, it did seem pretty comfortable though. And here's something strange, which I also found on the Imperator. While it seems like a fairly basic shape, it actually changes the balance in a big way, and it's to the point where I find it's easy to rock the mouse left and right, side to side. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I had trouble with the rocker jumping and even some flicks. Because the mouse just didn't track, I know it's not a sensor problem, so I think it might be the shape. I can't actually use this shape properly. I was probably tilting it accidentally while I was swiping, which meant that the sensor wasn't able to track anymore because it was actually lifted off the pad without me realising it. Now with the Imperator, I didn't give it time to actually adjust. This one, I've played at least four days with it, and I still can't get used to it. Now let's talk dimensions. The way I measure mice is between the fingers. We call that the grip width. 
so it's going to be hard to get a read on this, but it's roughly 6cm across. Next we measure the base, because that affects stability. Again, not the easiest to measure, and that's just about 10cm. The actual length is more like 12. Generally I like mice with a 2 to 1 ratio, so if it's a 12cm base, the grip width should be about 6cm. This one is more like 10 to 6, so it's not too far off, but it does seem to support the theory. It's roughly 4cm high with the hump toward the front, so it can be used in all grip styles, but none at the same time. For hand sizes, up to 19cm should be able to palm it, maybe 16 to 20 should be able to claw it, and 17 to 21 should be able to use fingertip grip. But don't quote me on those, because I'm actually not sure which hand size or which shape will suit this design. For me, this is just not a good shape. If this shape does suit you, please let me know in the comments. Just quickly, this is how I'm holding the mouse. And you see that my ring finger is actually right on the edge there. It's not underneath it, it's on top of it. It still feels easy enough to use and pick up, but again, that could have been a lot more comfortable. Anyway, first we're going to do the rocket jump test. This just tells me if there are any little minor faults with the mouse, because it needs to be precise and fast. Now you'll notice that I'm actually making a fair few mistakes and I found that this was the case in game as well. Don't know what it is about this mouse, it might be the shape, but I just can't seem to get it so it feels right. I'm just going to increase my sensitivity just a little bit, maybe the DPI is functioning a bit differently to what the other mice are. Oh, that's a mistake. Mistake. That was smooth. Smooth. Okay, see that's a lot better. Maybe the DPI settings are a bit different to the other mice, so I need a higher sensitivity on this mouse. So I'm gonna do this one. Nope. Try once more. Usually I can get this pretty well. No. Alright, once more. Okay, got it. So it's not too bad, but that's something that I'm going to need to check. Anyway, check back for comparison reviews and I'll match it up against other mice, see if it is actually different. Now moving on to the sniper test, where I set the zoom to FOV1, so zoomed right in. Now I'm just going to move the mouse pixel by pixel, and see if it tracks. It does, but this is a lot harder to do with this mouse. Again, I'm thinking it's something to do with the balance of the shape. Anyway, let's speed it up a little bit. So I think the sense is smooth. It's quite good, but the shape is not easy to move in smooth lines. That's my theory on it anyway. I've just tested this at high and low DPI, and it seems to perform just as well as the other 3310s at all levels. Now the acceleration test is never easy to do, but I'm going to try it for you. I've already tested it, there is no acceleration or deceleration, but just so you can see it. As long as I get near enough to that, it should be fine. And mouse is a bit crooked, so it's about there. That's a good performance. I highly doubt there's any acceleration or deceleration. The liftoff movement is standard. It's not doing anything weird. And I've just got two DVDs stacked on either side to test the liftoff distance, make sure the sensor's not touching either of them. And we're getting a little bit of tracking there. But I'll just quickly show you with one DVD under each. That's proper tracking. So I wouldn't say this is higher than 2 DVD. It's about that, so roughly 2.4 millimeters. Now I'm just going to try to draw a straight line. And this checks for angle snapping and also jitter. Seems fairly good. Now we'll check for skipping. 
so the Final Mouse 3310, no skipping, no jittering, and no angle snapping. There is no software for this mouse, and the DPI steps are 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. But having no software means you can't turn off the light, and you can't rebind the buttons. Now the important question, can I aim with it? The answer is sort of. For the most part, I was missing easy shots and had a bad kill-death ratio. Part of that was probably my fault. The other part was definitely the shape. It really kills it for me because it just does not feel comfortable and I can't play with it properly. That's just a personal opinion though. Obviously this mouse doesn't sue me, but that doesn't mean it's not going to sue you. If you like these sorts of shapes, then you should still definitely check this mouse out. If you find that you agree with my opinion in the other videos and you like the same sort of mice, then I'd probably recommend you staying away from this one. But that's not to say I didn't have some highlights. Here are some cool plays while I tell you my conclusion. It's great that we have a relatively small company in the market, like Final Mouse, so I'm happy to support and encourage them. Although I'm surprised that they released this mouse without fixing some of the problems when they were pointed out in 2015. The buttons, the textures and the materials, some of the design features, the quality and the idea are all great, but the shell simply isn't for me. I'm excited to try the mice that are more my style, being the Tournament Pro and the Scream 1. In conclusion, if this shape suits you, then I can recommend it. Lots of good points and very few problems. I'm assuming it's expensive because it's a small company. If so, fair enough. I'm happy to give them a bit of extra money, like Zowie, because it allows them to grow larger and give us even more mice. Competition is a very good thing, and already, Final Mouse is definitely a quality player in the market. If you want to purchase this mouse, I'll leave some Amazon links in the description. Thanks again to everyone who has used my Amazon links in the past, as that's how I've got this mouse now. Hope the review has helped you in your decision. I'll do some more comparison reviews in the future. So thanks for watching and the support. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video, and I'll catch you in the next.